so welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we are taking a look at Radetzky's March 100 Hours Campaign. Now this one is fresh off of a Kickstarter. It's a war game, and it's by an Italian company called, I'm going to butcher this, Dissimula Edizioni. Sure. It is designed by a gentleman called Sergio. Skiovi? Sure. Sorry if I'm butchering that. No offense intended. So, this is a game. Uh, Grant did an interview with the designer, kind of went through some of the cool uh, bits and pieces. So, if you want some more details about the gameplay and the decisions and the history that went into this, go check that out on theplayersaid.com. Uh, just search for Rodetsky's March and it'll pull up. Um, we got the game in today, and just wanted to kind of show you what you get out of this. It's, you know, it's, this is an Italian-based company. It was an Italian Kickstarter. This this is an English edition of it. But, you know, a lot of people a little bit hesitant to pull the trigger on this. So here's, here's what you're going to get. I think the Kickstarter it was 33 euros. So it's quite a tight, quite a tight fitting lid. An inch and a half box. Maybe close to two inches. Alright, D6, rule book. And I, I know there is at least an Italian version of this game, it being an Italian company and it being an Italian campaign. So this is the English version of the rules. And this is a good, let's see, similar. So you've got history of what's going on, there aren't any page numbers, game tips. Six, about 12 pages of rules or so. Yeah, it looks like this. 13, 13 odd pages of rules with an introduction here. But as you can see, this isn't a particularly dense rule book. The text is a decent size, but there's a lot of spacing, um, a lot of pictures and examples. So, uh, this blue text here, this is all examples of play. So, rules wise, this looks to be uh, nothing too heavy, especially with good diagrams and examples. There should be quite easy to learn and the game tips are going to help <laughs> I think that's uh, that's going to be something that I will pay attention to before playing this one so nice and easy digestible rules and you've got a nice historical order of battle as well as there was a lot of info in there because this campaign it's called the 100 hours campaign unsurprisingly because of its length uh, and what it was is this was a conflict and it's it's interesting how you read about this because this was um, a part of the, oh, I'm going to mess it up. It was a part of the f first Italian Revolutionary War or something like that. This is effectively, it's a campaign between the Kingdom of Sardinia and Radetzky and his Habsburg army. Uh, so it's, it's northern Italy and Austria going at it. Um, some territory, some history, some geography uh, behind all of that. Again, explained in there. Um, this is a game set in the 1840s, yep, 1849, and so, so it's the Napoleonic era, and Radetzky was actually, uh, he was a veteran of the Napoleonic Wars, um, as was, um, as was the Sardinian general, who I don't know his name, I forget, but it's all in here. So this is, technically it's post-Napoleon, but not a lot had changed, so it's the same movement style and combat tactics and, and weaponry as well, basically. So it gives you that feel, though technically not a Napoleonic era. So here we have a couple of play aids. These are different. Okay, so this one looks like it's got a summary of all the counters. And here you've got terrain effects chart. And as you can see, and we'll get to the map here in a bit, terrain. Um, pretty clear, pretty decent. So, and if you look here, this is actually um, duolingual. So you've got English and Italian. So this is probably a play that gets put into both copies of the game. This is a play in the sense that it's a setup card. So, which that, this is a really in, quite an intuitive way to do this. So this is the the Piedmontese deployment, and. You have all of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then there's like mini diagrams. Instead of just listing hex numbers, it shows you 
hey, you can start them within this area, and you set up these guys three anywhere in this area, these two guys anywhere here, these four anywhere here. So that's a pretty interesting way of doing that. And then you've got the Austrian Radetzky and his army on this side as well. And then over here you do have some optional, these units can be broken down into sub subdivisions, um, so you could break those out as well if you were so inclined, which I think that might help you defensively create a small picket line, I guess, because they're going to be weaker subdivisions, um, but it is what it is, so I'm not, technically speaking, I'm not sure about that. So here are the two counter sheets. These are a very interesting material. So these are almost like like the Compass Games, very thin white card. I think these are nice and floppy. Like if I'm just if I just hold it, there's a little bit of bend to them. Let me show you. These aren't necessarily the stiffest thing in the whole world, but and that being said, these counters are actually quite small. Uh, these are probably the size of a, a dime in America at best, or well, like a. Let's see. These might be small, like a five pence piece in England, maybe, maybe even smaller than that. But these are pretty nice little counters. Ooh, dropping it, but they punch decently from this, so that's that's not bad. Looks like they've got two little join join points um, on the card where they kind of punch out. So you get these little bit of feathering on the sides, but if you were that so inclined, uh, a quick hobby knife, just cutting those is going to make that pop out much easier. Generally speaking, looking at these, if you look, this, the printing on these are, is actually really, really nice. I, there's a lot of different color, a lot of detail, look at these nice counters here. Uh, lots of vibrant colors, so and that's actually really nice. Um, I, I want to say these are a little bit off-center, you can kind of see that there's a bit more of this blue space here, and this is very hard up against that, but it doesn't look like anything's cut off. So let's punch this one out here, and we'll just kind of take a look. This is how it's going to be on the board. And, I don't know if we get it in focus, there we go. I'm not losing any information there, but it's pretty tight on that left-hand side. But, for a smaller company, these are, I like the printing quality. I think that's really nice. This reminds me almost of those kind of, the laser cut counters where you get it printed on. It's a very similar print quality to these. And here we have more of those. These are Sardinian forces, I believe. And you've got some Habsburg units up here in gray with a nice little Habsburg shield on them. These are, I mean, just looking at those, these are normal infantry units. These look great. These are, I think this is going to be a really nice, fancy looking game on the board. And I think, you know, in a Napoleonic era where everything was very bright colors and standards and pride. I think that's going to be really, really nice, having a very nice looking board. And the, the last thing in that box is this play mat. And this is a pretty decently sized game mat. Let's open it up here. See if we can't get it all in, which we really might not be able to. Nope. It, it is a lot of green and a lot of roads with a lot of streams in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this up a little bit close so you can see this. Look, I like the detail on this map. This is actually a really, really pretty green. This is a very rich map with a lot of open space for all those Napoleonic maneuvers that you can do. But up here in the corner, you have combat results table, charge table, game turn track. That's really nice. I love it when games have that. You've got a couple of holding boxes here as well. I like when they print that stuff on the map. Uh, this material is really interesting. Um, the, the counters were also a, that very unique material. This is a very, a very thick paper, and as you can see from the folding increasing, that there's, it hasn't lost any of its ink at all, which is impressive. And this has a, I don't know what this is made of. I'll be honest. This has like a, it's like a semi gloss, almost satin. But you can see there's almost no reflection with my light. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, let's see if we can see the front of the box. This will. So the way this, uh, this is also that matte as well. Here we go. 
Shiny Rules book? Can you, man. Yeah, this is terrible. So here's my copy of Fields of Fire. This is shiny. Look at the terrible glare on that. This is very typical when I'm getting, playing with Plexi. I get these awful glare from my lights. This is almost non-reflective in that way. Like if I hold it up at that same angle, it just reflects all the light very flat. And when I'm looking at this, it, this looks fantastic on my table and the pictures are going to turn out great with this. So I'm, I think this is a really neat material. This, I, don't, I couldn't tell you what this is made of. I'd be fascinated to know and I would like to see more maps made out of this. See, this is really cool. It's very thick. I don't, like, this is actually feels like I'm not going to rip it in any way. Some, some maps you open them up and you almost rip them just opening them for the first time. This is a very, very thick paper. So I think this is really, really good. Um, and as you can see though, right, it's this big river. This was kind of the focal point. Um, the Austrians trying to charge over and take Novara up here in the north. You can't really see that. They're trying to take this city over here. Um, with Chile and, and down here. Nope, where's the other one? There was three cities they had to take. I think they had to take down here Casale as well. And, and conversely, um, the Sardinians, they're trying to push across the river and trying to get supply over here. So there's, you're basically, there's just gonna be this titanic struggle in the middle and whoever can break through and get supplied to the opposite end of the map is gonna be the winner. And I think that's a great Napoleonic situation because you're gonna have big pitched battles or it's gonna be running up and down the roads to defend key towns. There's a lot of options. This map is very open, but there are these kind of rivers and streams you're gonna have to cross. You have to get pontoons out to cross the river and the streams down here. So there's going to be some pretty interesting stuff going on. But that's it. That's Rodetsky's March. This is actually a pretty cool game. I honestly didn't know anything about this. Uh, Grant knows a lot more, but he's uh, he's tied up, so he wanted me to do an unboxing of it. So I had to sit down and read everything and figure it all out. But this looks like a really neat game. I'm not a big Napoleonics guy in any way, shape, or form. Haven't played many. Um, this isn't Napoleonics, but it's the Napoleonic kind of style. Um, so I think, and I enjoy that type of combat. So I think this is going to be a neat little, um, a neat little game. So I'm, I'm actually excited to play this. Um, this has been Radetzky's March, and it's from Dissimula Edizioni, I, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Check this out. It's you can buy it on the aftermarket. There are stores that have it in stock online. Um, this looks pretty neat and we'll get this played and you can uh, wait for a review coming out soon from the playersate.com. And one more time, I've been Alexander. Thanks for watching.